G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Bitcoin is on uh, quite a move, but it has pulled back ever so slightly. And I did say the other day I expected Bitcoin to go up and I kind of expect it to range roughly between the $12,200 to $12,600 range. Uh, we'll have to see whether that comes true, but $12,200, but we need to see this really hold and it's already down. So uh, 12,187 so we need it to hold above but we can see now that market cap is 377 billion so we're making our way back up to that 400 billion dollar mark again ever so slowly but geez the alts are really bleeding at the moment so again I'm waiting for a kind of leveling out pattern uh, and then I think there's going to be a really good buying opportunity for some of the alts now again not financial advice just my personal opinion and we can see that BTC dominance, it's now about 60%. I expect this BTC dominance to get up to around about the kind of 65, maybe even sort of 70% mark. Uh, and I think that'll kind of, and it might even go a little bit higher, could push above 70%. But I think that's when Bitcoin hits its uh, all-time high. And then you're quickly going to see money taken from uh, that and put right back into the alts. I think the alts will start to pump once Bitcoin breaks its new all-time highs people will be flooding into the alts at that stage. Again, we'll have to wait and see. Gas, gas prices are down, so uh, Guay is currently only 39, not too bad. You know, could be better, and with ETH 2.0 on the way, hopefully it will be better. But yeah, Bitcoin, 12,000, can it hold? Now there is something on the charts that I want us to have a look at, but first of all, let's have a look at the Dixie. So the Dixie's going down. So you would think that because the Dixie's going down, all the sort of uh, assets would be going up. Well, let's have a look at the Dow Jones to start off with. Not so much the case. It is going up a little bit, but it's been going down along with the Dixie for a while. So that is a little bit unusual. Again, usually when the Dixie's uh, not doing so well, things like you know the S&P 500, Dow Jones, Bitcoin, and things like that, they do well. But the Dixie's been going down for a while. And so has the Dow Jones. Let's have a look at the S&P 500. So here's the S&P 500. S&P 500 has been going down for a while as well. So a little bit unusual, but they are getting a little bit of green here. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens. But following up from yesterday, has Bitcoin finally decoupled? Let's have a look. Let's find out. And here's Bitcoin. Traveled sideways for a little bit, but really we've been going up since the second uh, 7th of October. So that's pretty much two weeks. We went up, traveled sideways a little bit, and went up again. Now, I don't think we have completely uh, broken that correlation because I want to show you something. And, and, you know, it's not exactly the same, but it is still a little bit the same. Have a look at this. Pumped up, went sideways for a little bit, and then pumped up. And then it just got really choppy. So we pumped up, we've gone sideways for a little bit, we've pumped up, and now we're waiting to see what happens. I do think that we're probably going to stay somewhere around the kind of 12,200, and we might even get up to the kind of 12,600, dollars level, and then the, we're probably going to get pretty choppy for a while. I think this pattern's a good chance of repeating, and then we're going to sell off. And I am kind of looking for us pulling back to somewhere down here at some stage. 11,000 sort of $100 range. Maybe that CME gap got covered. It's hard to know on the charts. There's little wicks that kind of look like it's been covered, but there were no real body candles that covered it. So it's hard to say whether it's been covered or not. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that this is absolutely what's going to happen. It just looks kind of somewhat similar to this. We had this move, it was sideways, only for a very short period here, but then pumped up and just got really choppy. Well, again, we've pumped up, a little bit choppy, and then another move, and we'll just have to wait and see. Look, I could be wrong, and it could just break through. And what we need to see is a clear break above this 12,000, and then a red day that closes above this 12,000, or at least, you know, maybe only wicks below. We need a confirmed breakout, not a fake out, because this could be a fake out. You know, we could break right up to, you know, 12,700, and then all of a sudden find ourselves back down here at 11,900, or even lower, who knows? We've just got to wait and see. But it is interesting that it looks like Bitcoin has decoupled for the time being. 
And that doesn't mean we've completely decoupled though. Maybe we just have a low correlation at the moment. We really have to wait and see. But it is promising to see that Bitcoin's doing well. And something that uh, I find very interesting is this article over here. As Bitcoin rises, more investors are buying in. And that's so true. Uh, unfortunately, you know, unless they're in it for the long haul, they, could, they, they might be considered dumb money because they're just getting in on the pump. They see something pumping and they're like, right, I've got to get in this. Uh, it's going to keep going. And look, it could. I'm not saying it couldn't. But really, you, I don't want to say don't because, you know, there's always an exception to the rule. But just be careful when you're buying into something that's pumping. Once something is starting to pump, a lot of the times, not all the time, but a lot of the times, it's closer to a retracement than it is to keep going. Again, always exceptions to the rule. But if you're in it for the long term and you're not going to freak out by, you know, you buying in at, let's say, $12,200, it goes to $12,700 in the next 48 hours. And then, you know, 24 hours after that, it's all the way back down here at 11100 If you can handle that kind of volatility, then you're going to be all right in the long term. But unfortunately, a lot of traders panic and, and yeah, then they sell at a loss. And, you know, long-term investors and whales and, you know, smart investors, they buy those up. They know the right times to get in and they're waiting for a pullback before they start to buy more. And now let's say Bitcoin does. It pumps right up. Let's say we get up here 12,700 and then we just get something like this, a brutal sell-off over, you know, two or three days. And we go from sort of 12,700 and come all the way down here to 11,000, sort of 100. We're still above this trend line down here and that would have us sort of around about here we're still on quite an upward trend because it would just start to do something like this again sideways and slowly pump up there still will be some uh reasonable corrections and again this is just my personal opinion not financial advice but i believe more institutions are going to get into this and are getting into this right now now there is another story over here Deja, no, sorry, that was uh, another one. We'll get onto that one in a second. But basically, the transaction price of Bitcoin has risen fairly substantially. Uh, and that is because more people are buying into Bitcoin. There's a whole lot of new addresses, and I'm not sure if it had it in this one. Here we go. The number of Bitcoin addresses holding more than 0.1 coins has hit an all-time high. Hence why. People are buying in because they see the price going up. And the number of addresses holding more than 100 coins, which is currently worth over 1.1 million, let's round it up and say 1.2 million, has reached a six month high. And likewise, even, you know, sort of somewhat smart money, when they see things going up, even they kind of chase it sometimes. And again, if they're in it for, you know, a period of time, they'll probably be just fine. But if they FOMO in and out, then they'll probably lose some money. You know, we'll have to wait and see. So this is what's happening at the moment. The, you know, people are getting uh, brave and they're like, oh, I can see it pumping, it's ready to go. So they're jumping on board. But what I wanna do is we checked on this yesterday. Now let's have a look what it's reading today. Yesterday it was still kinda a bit neutral. The fear and greed index. It wasn't quite uh, on the green. Uh, it's gotten a little bit higher. I think this was around about 58 yesterday. So now we're at 61. So as you can see, it's starting to blend into this green. Now there is a chance that it's quickly going to flip back this way. Now I don't think it's going to drop too far. Like I said, not so much on this. On the actual charts, I don't think we're going to, you know, again, break this trend line. I think that's highly unlikely. And I certainly don't think we're going to break this trend line. But Anything's possible, who knows? The only way this trend line gets broken uh, is if a global financial catastrophe happens. Uh, and this one, uh, I think there'd have to be some mega manipulation by some of the really, really big players to do that. Uh, and, and I just don't think they're gonna do that. I think they want to see the price go up. I don't think the bears are gonna play too much into the market at the moment. But again, that's not to say we can't see something like this and that is kind of what I'm expecting, really. I, I would like hope to be wrong. I'd like to be wrong. But I think something like this is coming. I think we're going to see another similar Bart Simpson uh, pattern in the market. I think we probably go a little bit higher again, up around that 12,600 to the 12,200. And we're going to chop around for a while. And then we're going to sell off and, yeah, probably come back down and test that 11,100. But again, 
that is still in this upward trend line. I think this upward trend line is not going to be broken anytime soon. And if by some chance it does get broken, I don't think it's going to be broken uh, severely. I think this will hold. Institutions are going to keep getting in. The more and more news there is like this, that Bitcoin's going up and more people are getting into it, they're going to get into it. Uh, the businesses that are right on the fence at the moment, you know, the institutions and that that are unsure, if they know something about the charts, they're waiting for this mark to get broken. But this isn't the mark that they're really going to kind of, you know, will swing them one way or the other. It will be this mark right here. Once this gets broken and it's clearly broken, not a fake out, pumps, about, pumps above and then quickly falls back below. Once it starts to close regularly above this green line and starts to move up, that's when you're going to get the true FOMO from the institutional buyers because they're going to understand, all right, it's just gone above. It's basically second sort of peak. Now, you know, there's been a couple of sort of peaks around about there, but that was way back uh, in 2017, 2018. Once they see that, that's basically going to be their confirmation. They're going to be like, right, this is going to go to new all-time highs. And like I said, once we get through this, I don't think we're going to spend too long here. At first, we might break through and then pull back down and then flip, flip and chop around underneath it for a while. But once we really clearly break this and maybe even have a pullback and a retest of it, I think it's off to the races. I think we are quickly going to get up to here. Uh, and, you know, whether there's a whole lot of re uh, rejection here, I think there will be people that will sell at that all-time high. But I think most people are probably, you know, waiting for, you know, bigger numbers. They're going to be waiting for 100,000, 150,000, 200,000, 250,000. They're the big numbers that I think a lot of people are going to start to want to take some profits at. Don't get me wrong, I think there will be people that are going to be taking profits at 20,000. I just don't think it's going to be a lot. I don't think that'll be too much of a hard rejection from here, although I do think there probably will be somewhat of a stall here, but I could be wrong. We could just pump straight through and then sky's the limit. Who knows? Again, I'm not sure about the 100,000, uh, whether we can do it. I, I, I think it's doable. I think it's quite easily doable. I'm just not sure if it will. It'll depend on the whole, you know, the whole financial system of the world at the time. You know, how the elections go, how corona well, elections will be long and done before then, so probably very little to do with the elections. More to do with how, you know, uh, the virus and uh, any possible vaccine has gone and things like that. Uh, financial markets, how much stimulus is being put in, uh, any drastic measures to reduce stimulus and things like that. So for me, I think, you know, I'd say 70, 80,000. I'm confident that Bitcoin's going to do that in this next peak cycle. I'm confident we'll do at least that. How much higher it goes after that, I just really don't know. It would not surprise me if we didn't see a 200 plus thousand dollar Bitcoin. I'm just not sure if we're going to get there. And again, you know, I'm going to start to slowly but surely scale out uh, at certain prices, really around that kind of hundred thousand dollar range. Uh, I'll probably take my first little bit of profit, a little bit before one hundred thousand dollars, because that's the big evens, and that's you know where a lot of people will take their money. So if you're looking to take some profit, don't take it on big even numbers. Take it on weird numbers, like you know, if you think it's only going to go to eighty thousand. Go $79,315 or something like that to take some profit or all profits, whatever it is you're going to do. No one can read the market perfectly, but when people usually put their sell orders, a lot of the time it's on big even numbers. So that would be my advice. Now, another story I found that I think we really need to cover. It's happened again. So Andre Cogne, uh, he's developed another protocol and people have dumped in money when it's still in the beta version uh, and are losing money. And that's nothing against Andre uh, Cognier, I think, or Cronier. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Look, he's a, a developer. He develops, um, you know, platforms and protocols and things like that. Uh, and he clearly stated this is in, uh, you know, development, like the last one that he did. I can't remember exactly what it was. And people got in and there was a, a bug and people lost money in that. Don't go jumping into things that haven't been battle tested, you know, at least haven't been audited. That's the main thing. And none of these are audited. He, he has them as like an open source thing that he works on uh, at the same time while they're open to people. 
I'm not saying you couldn't go in there and get lucky and invest in one of his projects that you know goes to the moon as they say but the chances are really really low I mean you know good on him for continuing to uh, develop I know he copped a lot of flack for the one that uh, had a bug in it uh, and you know Wi-Fi seems to be a pretty good uh, sort of platform program whatever you want to call it although the price is coming down that was always going to happen you know we had this big massive pump things were always going to pull back and this is cryptocurrency when cryptocurrencies pull back they pull back a lot you know we're talking 70 80 percent drops uh, when they can pull back at times so if you can't handle the 70 80 percent pullbacks on occasions then you don't really deserve the four five six hundred one you know thousand uh, percent gains that can be made in crypto cryptocurrencies you've got to be able to ride the highs and the lows and then after that you need to have some smarts and understand markets and when might be a good time to either you know completely get out if that's your game or at least start to slowly scale out what you're willing to sell you know if you've got your long-term holds you hold them and then you got the bits and pieces that you're going to scale out to have some cash on the side for another time whatever your strategy is you need to work that uh, stuff out and again I've got my strategy uh, you know a little bit before a hundred thousand uh, I'll start to scale out some of my Bitcoin I'm not going to sell all my Bitcoin I'd never do that I'm going to keep most of it I got most of my Bitcoin at a fairly good price uh, and yeah I'll be holding on to that long term but same with my altcoins there's altcoins that I have purchased that I just plan on selling the whole lot uh, you know when the time is right and there's others that the same thing I'll scale out a bit but I'll hold on to a majority of them uh, and I'll take that cash and then I'll be saving that cash for another time you know wait for the next bear market to happen because the next bear market will happen it just probably won't be as big the highs are going to get less in cryptocurrencies and the lows are going to get less uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general will eventually become a fairly sort of stable market a lot more like the stock market that we sort of have today but you know even that's not very stable at the moment but what it's been used to but I still think we have another cycle or two before we really get there I think Bitcoin has to get to around about a million dollars per Bitcoin uh, and once it gets there I think it will stabilize now it might not be exactly a million and it could be over a million but I think that million dollar mark is where Bitcoin uh, it won't fluctuate as much you know it won't have you know the massive sort of pumps that it does and it won't have the massive dumps a lot of the new altcoins will still be uh, you know like crypto is right now that's where it'll be really volatile you know some things will pump really hard and then others will dump really hard and you know we're waiting to see what happens with ethereum what's ethereum's kind of uh, level out price target you know some people have said they expect it to get to five thousand in this cycle other people have said it's a ten thousand dollar coin and now i've heard some other people say that it's a twenty thousand dollar coin but you know who knows what's going to happen in the future we'll just have to wait and see but anyway there's not a whole lot of other news out there i just thought i'd uh you know mainly the cor uh, correlation it seems we've broken free of it how long that's going to last who knows but bitcoin's been going up and a lot of these others you know they've been going down for a while and they are going down with the dixie at the moment so uh yeah I interesting times uh the correlation you know i think it was over exaggerated the correlation that bitcoin has with the other markets all markets have some correlation it's just at times the correlation can be high particularly in a pandemic sort of thing obviously everything's going to sell off people panic that's what happens but outside of that bitcoin is not that correlated to other markets so while they may continue to go down because people believe they're overinflated and that i think bitcoin will continue to go up and i think we're just gonna you know do something very similar i'll scale out a little bit to what it's done after every other halving i think we're going to see something like this there's going to be another bull market i don't think it's going to be as steep as this i think it'll be slightly smaller and it'll drag out a little bit longer and again another oh excuse me got the hiccups and burps going all at the same time sort of and then we'll go through another bear market but i think the bear market will just drag out longer uh, and won't be as deep that's you know just my personal opinion and a lot of uh, people are thinking kind of the same thing you know none of us are Nostradamus though we're not savants and we can't predict the future we're just taking what we would like to consider educated guesses all right that's it for me stay safe 
Be kind to one another. We should all be on that game train, which is really, really good. And I'll see you next time. Hit that like and subscribe button.